Hi. In this video, I'm going to take you through an overview on how to create a parser override. So before we start here, I just want to give you um, a brief clarification in terms of uh, terminology. So you might hear the term flex nectar um, at some point in time, and you might also hear uh, parsers. Um, and you might hear parser override. So a flex connector is something that you might create a parser for if, um, if we don't have anything out of the box, if we don't have a smart connector out of the box um, and we don't offer you know, that specific collection um, and parsing and, and mapping of a certain device and device product. Now, um, a parser override, on the other hand, is something that you might use when, let's say, we actually do have a smart connector uh, for a specific device, a specific product. However, um, there, uh, there might be a reason you want to put a parser override in place because, um, for example, if, uh, if a new version of a product comes out, and we don't have a, a proper parsing for it because it's, it's possible that as a new version of a product comes out that we have collection for if it has a new for, a log a new log format um, we might not read that properly or in the same way um, if it's a database if there's a new schema we might not necessarily um, have the the proper queries to pull that in uh, or even if we have something where it is um, properly parsing and mapping. However, there are certain aspects of an event that you want to pull out um, and, you know, whether it be for uh, searching and reporting, whether it be for correlation um, or, or lining it up to other uh, fields just to compare. Um, that's when you might want a parser override here. Uh, so this first screen that you see here, I'm, I'm actually at the, uh, the software download site. And you might um, already be aware, but I just want to make sure that you do know uh, that the unobfuscated parsers for the ArcSight Smart Connectors are now available for download. So you can download this zip file, which contains all the, uh, the parsers that we offer for all the out-of-the-box smart connectors. So once you download this zip file here, um, what will happen is you'll end up with this zip file. You, you open this up, and you'll have all the different parsers um, that we offer uh, for all the different smart connectors that we have here. So with, um, with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a, um, an example of editing one of these out-of-the-box um, smart connector parsers. I'm going to create a parser override, um, and we're going to do a little bit of uh, custom parsing and mapping uh, for that particular event. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, run the ArcSight regex tool. So I have a connector installed, and to run the ArcSight um, regex tool, you'll just want to go into the current bin directory of that connector and run arcsight space regex. And once I run arcsight regex, what that'll do is that'll bring up the, um, the regex tool here. I'll just take a minute for this to come up here. And while that's coming up, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a parser here. I actually want to edit the Apache parser. And um, I'm going to edit the Apache um, syslog connector. So I don't need to move that. I want to copy it. So I'm going to copy it here. So whenever I read a parser, I actually have to copy it somewhere within the uh, the current directory of the connector. I created this uh, folder called parser. I've placed the default 
um, Apache um, syslog subagent um, parser in here. And I'm going to go ahead and edit it. Now, if I take a look at this parser, um, you know, I can see uh, a lot of different um, pieces of information here. I've got the regex, I've got the, the tokens that get created, um, the initial mappings, and then there are a number of sub-message um, parsing that happens here. But to, uh, to make it a little bit easier on myself, instead of editing the, uh, the file from here, I'm going to go ahead and do it through the regex tool. So I've opened up the, uh, the regex tool. Um, the, uh, the, the log file that I have is the, um, the Apache syslog file. Uh, if I, if I needed to load that in, it's already loaded in here, but if I needed to load it, I can go to file, load log file, and then go ahead and search for my Apache, uh, syslog file. So again, this is the original, um, syslog file from Apache. And now I'm going to go ahead and load in the, um, the parser for Apache that comes out of the box. Because what I want to do is I want to actually edit that parser. So I've loaded this parser in. You can see that, um, you know, Everything's highlighted. That means it's parsing properly. I can see the, the parsing and mapping here. I'm pulling a lot of um, good pieces of information out of here during parsing. But let's just say I wanted to um, pull a little bit of extra information out or parse um, the event in a certain way. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take the, um, the URL um, that I'm accessing here. And um, just for this exercise, what I'm going to do is let's just say I wanted to parse out just the first subdirectory. So I don't necessarily want the whole URL. I just want um, the URL um, and the first subdirectory within that URL because, you know, maybe I, that's interesting to me for um, maybe some searching or some correlation here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this token, uh, drag it across here, and this is going to create uh, another mapping here. I'm going to go ahead and map this field to flex string one. Okay. So once I go ahead and do that, I should see this down here. Um, so that right now is getting mapped to flex string one, but again, it's the whole URL here. I just want the, uh, the first, um, part of this. Uh, so the first subdirectory here. So what I've done is I've created, um, a mapping for it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform a, a regex token operation here. And what that is doing is actually during the uh, the mapping, I'm taking that that token, I'm just parsing out part of it uh, just to get the first subdirectory here. If I test this, yep. So now I've got what I wanted here. It's just this first subdirectory. And if you're wondering about um, you know regex token or other mappings you know, how I can perform some of these different operations. Uh, if you, it's actually uh, all documented within the, um, the ArcSight Flex Connector Guide. So even though this is a Flex Connector Guide, um, you know, all the operations here work for um, parsing override as well. So if I wanted to find that specific piece that I was looking for here, I'm just looking for regex token and, uh, you know, this just has some information in terms of how I can write the regex tokens if I want. And again, it, it has all different types of um, operations, uh, different types of things that I can do here. Uh, and the, the regex token you'd, you'd find in here. So back to the, uh, the parser here. Um, 
so I'm adding a regex token here. And the other thing that I'm uh, wanting to add here as well is I am going to go ahead and add a, um, a label for, uh, for FlexString1. So all I'm going to say actually is that this is a parser override. Once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and test this again. It just puts the string constant of uh, labeling that this is a parser override. So uh, that lets me know that, OK, um, I've got this, um, this parser override in here. I've got this mapping for this URL. And uh, that, that's all I'm going to do right here for this particular exercise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this regex file. I'm going to go ahead and close this up here. I can verify that I've got what I wanted here. If I look for override, I can see here that, yes, um, I've put in this uh, event flex string one. Sorry. This event flex string one to um, to parse this uh, particular piece here that I wanted, which was the um, the URL with the subdirectory, and I've got this flex uh, string label one, where I've put this uh, the string constant that this is a parser override. So the next thing I need to do is put this parser in the right place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this file. And the place that I need to put it in is actually in the user agent FCP directory. Within the FCP directory, I need to create a subdirectory based off of where this file initially was. So if I take a look back at the, uh, the unobfuscated parsers, um, these files are, or these folders tell me where these parsers should go. So since this came out of the Apache folder, I need to create an Apache folder here under FCP. Once I do that, I can go ahead and place my parser here. Okay, um, I should be ready to start this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to clear up the uh, the log that I have here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and start this up here. So let me just make sure this is the Apache access file that I'm going to read. OK. I'm ready to start this. So um, Go ahead and start the connector manually. Um, you know, of course, you can have this running as a service. I'm just for the the purposes of this exercise choosing to run this um, manually here. As I run this, what you'll actually be able to see within the uh, the agent log is as it starts up, the the log should actually tell me that it uh, that it finds this override here. So this line actually is telling me that it found this this parser that I put in here. Again, remember I put it under current user agent FCP Apache. And it's telling me that this file augments um, the original parser. 
So what that means is it, it found the uh, the parser, it picked it up, and now it's going to use what I had um, put in there to augment the original um, parser file. So um, looks like it's gone ahead and, and read through the file. I'm going to go ahead and close this off. And one thing that I'll mention here uh, as well is that as you know, if you're looking to just test parsing, um, just test overrides, test flex connectors, one of the things that I like to do actually is um, I actually like to, to write the file just to a Ceph file. I don't necessarily write this to, um, let's say, an ESM or, or a recon instance or, um, or log or anything else. Um, I'm actually just writing this to a, a Ceph uh, text file. And that way, you know, I don't have to worry about writing to any system that I may not want to write to. Um, I can just go ahead and write it to a file. And it's, uh, you know, it's easy for me to go ahead and view this file and edit it. So this is the Ceph file that I've written to. And to configure, you know, this, this Ceph file, really all you have to do is um, edit the connector as you're installing it. There's a number of diff different destinations that you can choose. In this particular instance, I chose Ceph file. So let me go ahead and edit this Ceph file. I'm not going to necessarily reload that other piece here. And remember, um, what we added was the flex string one field um, for parsing here. So I can see that I've, I've found the uh, the flex string one uh, field, and I can see that it did indeed pick up that um, that URL with that first subdirectory that we picked here. And if you remember, also we did flex string one label, and that flex string one label um, was text that we said. This is a parser override. So yes, um, in fact, this is showing that yes, this is a parser override here. So that's it. Um, that's uh, how you go ahead and um, uh, basic tutorial on adding in a, a parser override here. Thanks for watching.